I think first signs of me was just like the first, uh, maybe, how do I put it? It was like a collection of mm. feelings that I wanted people to know okay. before you heard anything else about me. It was like the entry point mm. of me as an artist. Because you know, with, with music, it's really important for people to feel like they know you and to feel what you're saying. And I felt like if I put out the more happy songs and bubbly and, you know, like all in one go first, it would have been very hard for me personally to then tap into my more like reflective and sad emotions. So I was like, let me just get that out of the way. And then I can just work on whether even if it's still sad or if it's happy, I can just, then I can put my focus onto that. Mm. But to tap into an emotion I felt a, a while ago, after I've spoken about being happy, it just, I didn't feel like it would be genuine. Mm. And at the time when I was writing a lot of those songs, I was really in a bad place. So to, to be able to put that on, on record and go, right, I've let that go now, okay. was easier for me than to have to tap back into that. Right, because uh, Red is a good example of a, mm. of a song like that. And you mentioned earlier that it was a form of uh, expression mm -hmm. uh, from, from an early age. So does it help in a sense? Does it help getting through these thoughts? I think it maybe doesn't necessarily help change the situation, but it helps me understand right. the situation. Because when I write songs, I write pretty fast and the words just come out and then I can sing the song back and I'm reading the song back and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's how I feel. So with Red then, what, what was that thing? Well, well, because okay, you say yeah, you weren't yeah. in the best of places, so what? So Red, I was sat in my bedroom and I was having a good cry. <laughs> and I just felt like this, I'm really sad. I'm feeling really, really depressed. And, but there's something in me. I just, I want to be here. Like there's a time where I didn't and there's, now I feel like I do but I'm just conflicted, so what is it? And that was Red, basically. It's okay. me saying, well, I know right now I feel like I'm going crazy, but I think I'm on my way to be feeling good again. Um, and, it, and it has to start with me. So it was, it was that kind of self-reflection and self-analyzation mm. and of my, yeah. What was the turning point then? What, what got you back into a, a good mind state? I don't really remember a particular point, mm. but I remember there was a shift in my energy mm. where I kind of realized that I, if I let my depression control me, mm. I'm going to be living for my depression always. But if I just kind of say no and live above it, all the time. It's like fake it till you make it, you know? Mm. If I live above my depression at all times, more than likely the chances are I'm gonna feel all right. <laughs> and, and for some people, it's not that easy. For me, I'm quite, with my emotions, I'm quite snappy and I'm yeah. very, I'm able to control my happiness. Sure. So, yeah. And then I can imagine a song like that, what was the response like? Because a lot of people, I suppose, can identify. Yeah, it's funny you say that, because I put the song out on SoundCloud, okay. like, way before I even mm. started it, music. Um, and the response was like, oh my gosh, this song is amazing, I've cried to it. And, mm. da -da. and then the same thing happened when I put it out on the EP. Everyone was like, whoa. <laughs> I feel this song, mm. it speaks to me. And you just forget how human everyone is for mm. a minute. And it felt good to know that I had helped someone else to realize how they felt and realize that they're also trying to get out of this depression. They also want to do better and feel better. And it just kind of starts with, I guess, one thought. It's like one spark some, some, sometimes. Mm. can spark a conversation, can spark change. So. Sure.